so we are back with another adventure uh, today. Um, there's a little bit of an update with the channel that I would like to talk about uh, before we begin our journey. Uh, today's topic, well, we're going to talk about like the beginning of the end of the Civil War uh, and what kind of led up to it and what happened after the surrender of Lee at Appomattox uh, with General Grant. But before we get into that, uh, there is a couple of updates that I would like to discuss. Um, first and foremost, I do want to say thank you to all of the recent subscribers, uh, all the support that they have recently gave me, uh, putting all the comments in there, all the views that I've been getting on the channel. I do appreciate that. I, I can't stress it enough more. I can't stress it enough how much I really do appreciate all the support. Um, I did hold a contest um, and uh, I received a couple of uh, stories and some of them were really interesting stories. I do appreciate all the uh, participants out there, um, but I have recently uh, looked over um, the stories uh, as well as um, some other information to, to kind of help me gather uh, some better resources to help me pick out the winner um, but I have picked uh, I have picked a winner uh, after uh, discussing it with my wife uh, we have selected a winner of the hundred subscriber giveaway uh, it's going to go to our good friend Jenny um, and the reason why I have picked Jenny uh, is that we go a long way with each other uh, she's she's a great she's a great friend. Uh, she has shared so many stories uh, with me, um, not only with my time being out there at the Chelsea Historic Society, uh, but she has also provided me information about her third great grandfather uh, with the 31st Alabama, um, and I was able to receive that honor and that privilege uh, to actually see where he is actually buried. Uh, so that one really uh, touches my heart uh, to the point where um, I actually cried a little uh, when I was able to be able to see uh, his grave and actually be you know right there uh, next to him and his wife. Uh, I took a picture there that's on my Facebook fan page uh, where, where it looks like we have actually caught uh, two ghosts uh, on, on camera uh, so uh, if you guys haven't checked that Facebook fan page out, I'll, I'll also drop the uh, picture in this video to let you guys kind of see what I was uh, talking about with the two ghosts. I'll even circle it so you guys can see where they're actually located in the picture. Uh, but th that was actually in broad daylight, so that was actually pretty crazy uh, to catch them out there like that in that time of day. Uh, but I, once again, uh, thank you to all the recent subscribers, all the recent um, participants in the contest. I do appreciate all the support. I hope that you guys continue following me with my journeys, uh, staying subscribing with me, and uh, liking the videos. Uh, it really does. It really does help out the channel, uh, and I want to continue growing. I want to continue educating everyone with the Civil War history as well as the Native American history. Um, I'm looking at trying to do some more paranormal investigations, um, but I don't know if that's going to really come until I eventually move down to Savannah, uh, which is coming up in the next coming year. Um, I'm planning on going out there and uh, starting my new life with my family uh, out there in Savannah. We're going to do a couple of paranormal investigations, go out there to South Carolina uh, and finish our saga. Uh, of the 31st Alabama where they finished up uh, where their last battle was at Bentonville uh, where Joseph E. Johnson surrendered to, Rob, or to uh, General Sherman uh, so I'm looking forward to that uh, I got a couple of events coming up I have a reenactment coming up uh, at the first weekend in November super excited about it uh, I got a reenactment coming up at the first weekend of December in Alabama. Super excited! Uh, that is also where I'll be. Re we'll be handing out the uh, the prize money 
uh, to Jenny for winning the contest. Uh, so if you're watching this, Jenny, uh, I love you. Like I love you. Uh, you're you're a great friend. Uh, I love you too, Bill. Uh, I can't wait to see you guys again soon. I know I was gonna make it out there to you guys. Uh, got a little hectic, a little financial uh, trouble in in the time frame, uh, but uh, trying to just work out a lot of kinks. Uh, and trying to get everything situated so I can get out there and see you guys. You guys are like family to us. Um, uh, also, I'm super excited because I have actually received the honor and the privilege of joining the 5th Company Washington Artillery uh, with my great friend Alan and Terry and the other guys. Uh, so I'll be in Florida, not filming, but I'll be out there loading the cannons and firing the cannons. My wife uh, will be on the sidelines shooting the camera, so you guys gotta work with her. She's gonna be a rookie at it, but I know that she'll do well. She's 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 got a tech, you know a technical wizard as a husband, so she'll figure it out. Uh, but I'm super excited about that. Uh, we possibly will be going out to South Carolina. I'm not 100% sure on that, but we do have that in the books uh, to go out there and support my friend Joshua. Hey, Josh, I hope you're watching this. I love you, bro. And you guys are doing a great job with the 5th uh, Georgia Calvary as well. Uh, I enjoyed you guys being out there at Stones River. If you guys haven't seen that video as well, it is on the Facebook channel. It is. Uh, getting a lot of views. It's only been up for four days, 236 views. So once again, you know, thank you to all the subscribers, you know, the subscribers, the viewers. Uh, I love you guys. Thank you for all the support on that video. Uh, I wish I would have been able to go out there at the first battle on Saturday, uh, but you know, there was other things that came up. I've been working with the Washington Artillery, uh, in particular, especially uh, with Allen. Uh, helping build a website uh, to boost their recognition and trying to get some more fans uh, to recognize that unit as well. So I'm been pretty in particular busy. Uh, so if you guys um, can just work with me, uh, if there's places that you guys would like me to go to, uh, like once again, just drop it in the comment section. I love reading comments. I love replying to you guys. Uh, you guys are amazing. Like I've always said, I can't do these things, go to these places without you guys. And that's why I can't stress it enough how much I love you guys. You guys are the best. Uh, also, me and my wife uh, and our daughter and our other daughter will be going to Gettysburg in April. Uh, we have booked our hotel, so I'm super excited about that. We're going to be out there for uh, about a week. Uh, so we're going to try to tackle as much as we can at the National Military Park in Gettysburg, uh, the National Cemetery out there in Gettysburg. Uh, we're going to do a lot of paranormal investigation on the battlefield. Uh, so we're also going to tackle Jenny Ward, Jenny, Jenny Wade uh, house. Uh, so I'm super excited about that. If you guys are not familiar who, were, who was uh, Jenny Wade, uh, it's a great story. I can't wait to share it with you guys. Um, but uh, if you guys are, are curious and want to know a little bit about the story before I bring you guys the content, uh, you guys can check it out at the Gettysburg National Military Park website or even you know Googling uh, Jenny Wade. Uh, it was a fantastic story, but it's also a sad story of a, of a woman who was just living in the house uh, and she was just break, baking bread, you know, minding her own business uh, until a stray bullet uh, from a Confederate gun uh, went through the door and struck the lady uh, and ultimately killed her. Uh, so it's a sad story, uh, but her spirit still walks through the house. So I'm super excited about going out there with a night vision camera, possibly. Uh, but I am going to go out there with a K2 meter uh, and see if I can get some readings. Because uh, I love communicating, uh, not only with the living, but also with the dead. Uh, because I know that they have untold stories that we may not know. Uh, now, the story that I do have in store for you guys today, it's going to leave you guys probably a little bit mind blown. Uh, it's going to share you guys, it's going to shine a light on the Confederate as well as the Union soldiers and how their friendship build 
uh, before the Civil War and even after the Civil War. Uh, but without that being said, make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and like always, drop a comment. Set and drop a comment. Let me know you guys enjoyed the video. Even if you guys subscribed, even if you guys liked the video, or even have suggestions of where you guys would like me to go. I love reading them. I love you guys. And here we go. All right, you guys. So. The beginning of the end of the Civil War can be traced to a planning session held in a Cincinnati hotel. On May 20th, 1864, two of the Union's most celebrate, celebrate generals, General Grant and General Sherman, hold up, hold up in a parlor of the burnt house an elegant hotel on the northwest corner of the 3rd and Vine Streets to defer a strategy to crush the Confederacy. At the time, historical meeting guaranteed merely a single paragraph in the Cincinnati Choir running beneath the day's theater listing, sight -seeking seekers thronged the, the hotel. The newspaper reported, but there were no speeches our public announcements. No one knew what was going on behind closed doors. On March 27, 1865, President Abraham Lincoln meets with the Union Generals Grant and Sherman at City, City Point, Virginia to plot the last stages of the Civil War. Lincoln went to Virginia just as Grant was preparing to attack the Confederate General Robert E. Lee's lines around Petersburg and Richmond, an assault that promised to end the siege that had drug on for 10 months. Meanwhile, Sherman's forces force was steamrolling northward through the Carolinas. The three architects of the Union victory convened for the first time as a group. Lincoln and Sherman had never met at Grant City Point headquarters. At the General and Chief's request, as part of the trip, Lincoln went to the Petersburg Lines, witnessed a Union bomb bombardment and a small skirmish. Prior to meeting with the generals, the President also reviewed troops and visit wounded soldiers. Once he sat down with, with Grant and Sherman, Lincoln expressed concern that Lee might escape Petersburg and flee to North Carolina, where he could join for forces with Joseph Johnston to forge a new Confederate army that could continue the war for months. Grant and Sherman assured the President the end was in sight. Lincoln improvised to his generals that any surrender terms must preserve the Union, aim, union aims of the proclamation and pledge of equality for the formal enslaved people. After meeting with Admiral Admiral David Dixon Porter on March 28th, the President and his two generals went their separate ways less than four weeks later, Grant and Sherman had secured the surrender of the Confederacy. On April 9th, 1865, General Robert E. Lee surrendered his Confederate troops to the Union's General Grant and Appomattox Courthouse in Virginia marking the beginning of the end of the greeting 40-year-long American Civil War. But it would be more than 16 months before President Andrew Johnson would declare a formal end to the conflict in August 1866. Appomattox was undoubtedly a defeat victory for the Union, and Grant's peace agreement with Lee would provide a blueprint for other generals around the country. So why did it take so long for the war to officially end after that? For one thing, Lee had surrendered only his army of Northern Virginia to Grant. A number of other Confederate forces still remained active, starting with General Joseph E. Johnson's Army of Tennessee, the second largest Confederate army after Lee's. On April 12th in North Carolina, Johnson and his men received work news of Lee's surrender. The next day, General William T. Sherman, Union Cavalry, captured Riley, pushing Johnson forces westward. Under relentless pressure from Sherman, Johnston reached out to discuss peace 
terms after the newly sworn in President Johnston and his cabinet rejected an initial accord which gave generous political concessions to the South. Confederate President Jefferson Davis ordered Johnston to resume fighting. Johnston knew his back was, again, was to the wall, refused. On April 26, Sherman and Johnston signed a new surrender agreement along the same lines as Grant and Lee's Appomattox Accord. In the biggest surrender of the Civil War, Johnston gave up around 9,000 soldiers in all, virtually all remaining Confederate troops in the Carolinas, Georgia, and Florida. When news of Johnston's surrender reached Alabama, the next domino fall, Lieutenant General Richard Taylor, the son of President Zach Zachary Taylor and commander of more than 10,000 Confederate men, concluded a similar, similar peace with his Union counterpart in the region and surrendered his army on May 4th. Several days later, Nathan B. Nathan Bedford Forrest gave up his cavalry corps at Gainesville, Alabama, telling his men that we are beaten is, is a self-evident fact, and any further resistance on our part would justly be re regret, regarded as the very height of folly and rashness. Still, the South wasn't quite done. Even after those surrenders, after Union troops captured the fugitive Davis in Georgia, and after President Johnson declared on May 10th that the South's armed resistance may be regarded as a virtual at, at an end, fighting still continued west of the Mississippi River near Brownsville, Texas on May 12th. A force of 350 Confederates under Colonel John Rip Ford defeated 800 Union troops led by Colonel Theodore H. Barrett in the Battle of Palmetto Ranch, the last land battle of the Civil War. It's mainly Texans versus Texans, says Charles D. Gear, professor of the history at Central Texas College and author of Why Texans Fought in the Civil War. It wasn't really that big of a fight, but it's still the last significant conflict in the Civil War. By that time, Lieutenant General E. Kirby Smith, Army of the Trans-Mississippi, the last major Confederate forces still in the field, had begun distinguishing when the news arrives about Appomattox. That's when you're going to have a mass accession from the Army Gear says, adding that by late May, Smith was basically a general just in name because he has no army. On May 26, Smith surrendered his command at Galveston in Indian Territory, now Oklahoma. Brigade General Stan Waddy. If you guys are not, if you guys are not familiar with about Stan Waddy, uh, check out my video on the Cherokee Brave. Uh, that is Sam. That's a story about Sam Waddy, uh, as well as the five Indian tribes uh, that actually joined the Confederacy uh, to battle the Union out there in the West or in the Indian Territory. It's a great video filled with some great history, great information. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description box as well uh, to that video, so you guys can click on that uh, and even check it out if you guys want to know. If you guys want to know a little bit more. Uh, about Sam Waddy. Uh, I read it. I loved it. Uh, I hope that you guys enjoy it and love it as much as I do. Um, but uh, Sam Waddy was the first Native American to serve as the Confederate general. Kept his troops in the field for nearly a month after Smith gave up the Trans-Mississippi Army on June 23rd. Waddy finally acknowledged defeat and surrendered his unit of the Confederate Cherokee Creek Seminole and Oswich troops at Dokensville near Fort Townsend, becoming the last Confederate general to give up his command.
The armies of the Union General William T. Sherman and Confederate Joseph E. Johnston battled each other time and time again throughout the Atlanta and Carolina campaigns in 1864 and in 65, but the two men never met in per person until 7, April 17, 1865, when a week after Lee's surrender to Grant, Johnston decided to surrender almost 90,000 of his and other Confederate troops to Sherman, the largest surrender of the war. The two men met three times during the surrender ne negotiations. Johnston convinced Sherman to try to end the war once and for all by negotiating both military and civil terms, but the document Sherman drew up was rejected by President Johnston and his cabinet, who felt the proposed terms were too lenient with the South and they insisted that Sherman give Johnston the same terms that Grant gave Lee and not concern himself with civil matters. Sherman wasn't surprised by the cabinet's rejection of the proposed terms, and Johnston ignoring a suggestion from the Confederate Secretary of War to fall back with his troops to Georgia agreed to Grant Lee terms, which immediately, immediately, immediately were already fairly Generous. Sherman also gave Johnston 10 days worth of ration, re, rotations for 25,000 men. The two generals left with a high opinion of each other. Johnston never forgot Sherman's gen, generosity. The two cultivated a friendship after the war. When Sherman died in 1891, Johnston, then 84 years old, attended his funeral as a pallbearer. It was cold February day, but when Johnston was told he should put on his hat so he didn't catch a cold, Johnston replied, if I were in Sherman's place, he, w he, were, he, would st he were standing in mine, he would not put on his hat. Johnston constantly caught a cold at the at the funeral which turned into ammonia and he died a month later. James Longstreet first met his friend U.S.S. Grant in 1843 during the Mexican War. Grant became acquainted, acquainted with and courted Longstreet's fourth cousin Julia Dent and the couple eventually married Longstreet attended Grant's wedding on August 22, 1848 in St. Louis and Grant's biographer Jean Edward Smith believes that Longstreet served as Grant's best man in the wedding. Though other historians disagree, neither Grant nor Longstreet mention such a role in each other uh, of their it, such a role in either of their memoirs. Twenty years later, when Longstreet learned that his old friend Grant was in command of the Union Army, he told his fellow officers, Grant will fight us every day and every hour until the end of the war. When Longstreet retreated with Robert E. Lee in Appomattox campaign, he advised Lee of his belief that Grant would treat them fairly. Shortly after the surrender was signed. Grant met with a few Southern officers when he saw Longstreet in the group. He approached him warmly, grabbed his hand, and said, Pete, let us have another game of brag to recall the days that, we, that were so pre pleasant. Longstreet later reflected on how he felt at the time, writing, Good, Great God, I thought to myself how my heart swells out to such magnolias touch of humanity. Why do men fight who were born to be brothers? After the war, Longstreet and his family settled in New Orleans where he entered in a cotton brokerage par partnership. He applied for pardon from President Andrew Johnson and this was supported by his old friend Grant, who was then the Union Army General in Chief. Johnson refused the pardon, telling Longstreet in the meeting, there are three persons of the South 
who can never receive immensity, Mr. Davis, General Lee, and yourself, you have given the Union cause you you have given the Union cause too much trouble. Longstreet was one of the number of men, of former Confederate generals, including James L. Acorn and William Marone, to join the nationally de dominant Republican Party during the Reconstruction era. He endorsed Grant for president in the election of 1868 attended his inauguration ceremonies in Washington, D.C. Six, six days later, was appointed by Grant as a servar of the customs in New Orleans. This cost him his reputation, the eyes of many white Southerners. His old friend Harvey Hill wrote to a newspaper, our scalawag is the local leaper of the community. Longstreet continued his friendship with Grant until Grant's death in 1885. He held a number of jobs in the government. In 1880, President Rupert Ford Haynes appointed Longstreet as his ambassador to the Ottoman Empire, and later he served from 1897 to 1904 under Presidents William McKinley and Theodore Roosevelt. A U.S. Commissioner of Railroads. He served as a U.S. Marshal from 1881 to 1884, but the return of the Democratic administration under Glover Cleveland ended his political career. In December of 1889, his wife Louise Longstreet died, but he surprised everyone in 1897 when, at the age of 76, in a ceremony at the governor's mansion in Atlanta, he married 34-year-old Helen Dorch. Helen became a supporter of his legacy after his death. She outlived him by 58 years, dying in 1962. When Grant died in 1885, one of his pallbearers were former Confederate General Simon B Buckner. Buckner and Grant became friends at West Point and served together in the Mexican-American War. When Captain Grant ran into trouble at New York Hotel due to a shortage of money, Buckner helped him out by covering his expenses until money arrived from Ohio to pay for his passage home. Years later, in February 1862, Union Brigade General Grant captured Fort McHenry on the Tennessee River. General Albert Sidney Johnston sent Buckner to be one of the four brigade generals defending Fort Donaldson. When command it was passed to Buckner, he sent a messenger to the Union Army requesting an autistic and a meeting of commissioners to work out surrender terms, hoping his old friend Grant would offer generous terms. Grant famously replied, no terms except unconditional and immediate surrender can be accepted. I propose to move immediately upon your works. Buckner responded in part, the overwhelming force under your command complies me to accept the ungenerous and unchevious terms which you propose. In spite of the tension in the correspondence, Buckner granted his old friend warmly when Grant arrived to accept the surrender. They joked about their time in Mexico, and Grant offered to loan Buckner money to see him through his impending imprisonment, but Buckner declined. Buckner later not only acted as a pallbearer for Grant, he also paid for Grant's funeral and provided Grant's widow a financial monthly payment so she could live out her years. General Joseph E. Johnson was also one of Grant's pallbearers. Though his post-war friendship with Grant was not as close as that of Longstreet and Buckner, Johnson never forgot the mag magnet of the men who, to whom he surrendered. He would not allow criticism of either Grant or William T. Sherman in his presence. Johnson was closer to Sh Sherman 
and the two corresponded frequently and met for friendly dinners in Washington whenever Johnston traveled there. Johnston served as an honor, honorary pallbearer at his, at his Sherman's funeral. There is a story about Johnston at Sherman's funeral. During the procession in New York City on February 19, 1891, he kept his hat off as a sign of respect for his former advisory. It was a cold, rainy day, and someone concerned for his health asked Johnson to put on his hat. Johnson replied, If I were in his place and he w were standing here in mine, he would not put on his hat. He caught a cold that day, which developed in, into ammonia and died several weeks later in Washington, D.C. It is remarkably that desperate, despite the horrors of the war that Grant and his Confederate advisories experienced, Grant retained the strength of character to leave the past in the past and to treat his former oppon opponents with civility, respect, and generosity. It sounds like the feeling was mutual. All right, you guys, so that is the epic ending of the war, of the Civil War. I know it's kind of a little, little off, a little strange to kind of share that message right now because, uh, you know, there is still a lot of places, a lot of things uh, for me to tackle and to uh, share with you guys. Uh, I came across this story and I thought that it needed to be shined upon uh, as well as be shared uh, to many of people. Um, I hope that you guys enjoy this video. I love you guys. Make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe to my channel. And I am also dropping another video right after this. Uh, it is on the history of the 5th Company Washington Artillery. It's for you, Alan and Terry. Uh, so I hope that you guys enjoy this video. Love you guys. Talk to you guys again soon.